In 397 AD, by imperial edict, pants were declared illegal in the city of Rome. The penalty was exile for life. Regrettably, we know nothing about the enforcement of this decree or its impact on Roman society. Did imperial anti-trouser squads prowl the streets? Did bands of pants-wearing rebels convene clandestinely in catacombs, comparing fabrics and plotting revenge? The sources are silent. From a modern perspective, this is a perplexing persecution. I, at least, think pants are pretty great. They have useful pockets and make it difficult for small dogs to bite one's calves. At least some Romans felt the same way. The embers had to repeat their pants ban twice. So why, in the face of popular opposition, did the imperial government attempt to outlaw such an obviously excellent article of clothing? Welcome to this third episode of Questions About Ancient Greece and Rome You Were Afraid to Ask in School. I am Dr. Garrett Ryan, and today's question is, why didn't the Greeks or Romans wear pants? It might be best to begin with what the Greeks and Romans actually did wear. First, the Greeks. You may recognize the handsome scholar in this picture as yours truly, in the box wine from that Drinking Games video. But try to tear your eyes from my alluring person and look instead at the bedsheet I am wearing. This is only a bedsheet to the untutored eye. It is, in fact, a very crudely wrapped hemation, a standard garment for men in classical Greece. There were many ways to fold a hemation, which could be worn either by its chest-bearing self or over a tunic. Greek men who had to perform physical labor usually wore only a knee-length tunic, often tied over the left shoulder to leave the right arm free. Women in classical Greece usually wore a chiton, a full-length tunic. The alternative to the chiton was a heavier garment known as the peplos, which was fixed at the shoulders with brooches. These brooch pins, incidentally, could double as weapons. A crowd of Athenian women once killed a man with their brooch pins. The definitive Roman garment was, of course, the toga. Unfolded, a toga was a semicircular sea of wool some 20 feet across. Putting it on was an art. Some wealthy Romans kept a slave whose primary duty was to help them crease and drape their togas. Since pins were never used, a toga wearer had to keep his left arm crooked at all times to keep his folds from falling into disarray. Besides being an ordeal to put on, the toga was heavy and almost unbearably hot in the summer. Understandably, Roman men tended to wear their togas only on ceremonial or formal occasions. On a daily basis, most preferred a simple knee-length tunic. The traditional costume of Roman married women was the stola, a sleeveless wool dress often worn with a mantle. Most women, however, preferred full-length tunics, which were lighter, more comfortable, and more easily adapted to taste or fashion. For the next segment of this video, I initially hoped to get some friends to model ancient clothing, but once I realized how much work that would be, I decided instead to just print off some figures from the internet. The following dialogues between said figures were carefully scripted to help you distinguish Greek from Roman clothing. Dialogue 1 Greek man I say, my Roman friend, your toga looks rather uncomfortable. My hemation, on the other hand, is both breathable and stylish. Also, you can see my pecs. Roman man I will burn your city to the ground, and then put on a tunic to relax. Dialogue 2 Roman woman my, what a lovely chiton you've got there! I sure wish I weren't a respectable Roman matron and didn't have to wear this stola. Greek woman. What happened to the third dimension? Moving on. Whether tunics or togas, Greek and Roman clothing was draped over the body, not fitted to it. Although loose clothes made sense in a hot Mediterranean climate, this was basically a cultural convention. Those who lived outside the Greco-Roman cultural sphere followed very different fashion rules. The Scythians of Ukraine, for example, liked to wear cloaks made from human skin. Another northern tribe preferred the ancient equivalent of a jumpsuit. But the barbarians the Greeks and Romans knew best wore pants. For the classical Greeks, 
the Persians were the archetypal barbarians. Their strangeness was epitomized by the brightly colored trousers they wore, which tend to characterize them in Greek art. The Gauls and Germans, who gave the Romans so much trouble over the centuries, also wore pants. In this case, tight-fitting and jauntily striped wool slacks. Both the Greeks and the Romans, in short, closely associated pants with barbarians. In combination with cultural inertia, this ensured that nobody who was anybody put on pants for a very long time. But then, starting in the first century AD, Roman soldiers stationed along the cold northern frontiers began to wear tight, knee-length breeches of wool or leather, complemented by bands of cloth around the calves, the ancient equivalent of capris and leg warmers. Over the following centuries, this outfit was gradually replaced by genuine pants. Already in the early 3rd century, an emperor was known for his shining white campaign trousers. In the 3rd and 4th centuries, as a growing number of soldiers became emperors and high officials, military-style pants gradually became socially acceptable in civilian life. It is unclear how prevalent this pioneering pants-wearing was. The 397 pants ban in Rome, with which we began this answer, suggests that there was resistance among the Roman elite, though it is unclear whether this was because pants were barbaric or because pants were military. In either case, within a few decades, senators and court officials were wearing pants even in the emperor's presence. History, it seems, was on the side of the pantaloons. And for that, we should be grateful. For more ancient clothing and other cool stuff, check out toldenstone.com. In our next episode of Questions About Ancient Greece and Rome You Were Afraid to Ask in School, we're going to be talking about war elephants. So, you know, feel free to subscribe. In the meantime, I appreciate your pants, and as always, thanks for watching.